So my name is Melissa Taylor, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, last name Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, Denver Fire Department, PIO and firefighter. So just before we begin, I just want to make clear, um, Chief Tate is going to give a statement uh, kind of about his care, ongoing prognosis, things of that nature. He won't be able to speak to anything regarding the ongoing investigation that's being conducted by DPD. We do have representatives from the Denver Police Department here who can answer those questions after the press conference as they are able to. So with that, I'll turn it over to Fire Chief Tate. Good afternoon. First off, I want to say thank you to uh, all of our first responders in the city and county of Denver, all of our partners, especially Denver Police Department, Denver Health Paramedics, and the crew here at Station One provided excellent care. feel very fortunate to be in a city where we get really quality, timely emergency services. I also wanted to thank all the doctors and nurses at Denver Health Medical Center. They did a tremendous job in taking care of me. For that, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all the citizens that have expressed their concern and sent their wishes of a speedy recovery. And as most of you already know, yesterday I did receive several stab wounds, uh, one to my right leg and then my right hand received um, several deep lacerations requiring some tendon repair in two of my fingers. And so that was performed at Denver Health yesterday and I'll be receiving follow-up care. I did return back to work today and have a prognosis of a full recovery. It's not the worst place in the world to get stabbed, Chief. I mean, you're right outside of the station if you're talking about that. So, very fortunate. I just came down to my car here, which is parked right outside the front of the station here and wasn't 20 feet from my parking spot, which happens to be right in front of Station 1. So, immediately had a rapid response from all agencies, from not only the fire department was right here, but Denver Police was on scene in what literally seemed like seconds. Denver Health was here and again I think that's the fortunate part of being in downtown Denver and being where we have such a high degree of emergency services. I think the firefighters and paramedics who were here at Station 1 were surprised to see their chief walk in like that? Um, I think it caught everybody off guard a little bit. It surprised me too. Can you walk us through what happened? Um, okay. Careful not to talk about the investigation. Hey, I guess I can't walk through the actual steps of it. Um, it was very unusual. It was a very surreal experience. Um, without getting into Denver Police's investigation, probably the scariest thing was being trapped in, or being restrained while it was going on. Can you, I know you can't talk about what happened, but can you talk about what you were doing before all this stuff happened? What were you doing? I had just came down to my car, um, pulled out, you can see I parked right there, and pulled up to the light. and. Uh, was on making a phone call to our division chief of fire prevention. We were working through a fire prevention issue. Um, last thing I remember telling him was hold on and then obviously that's when the stabbing occurred and so he got to listen to it all on the phone. Where, oh God, where were you going? Um, I was, like I said, pulled out. We were resolving a fire prevention issue and then eventually I was going to actually go and pick my kids up from school, which ironically they happened to be traveling by on a school field trip from the state Supreme Court trip, so they actually drove through the intersection immediately following the incident and seeing all the firefighters come out from the station. What did they say when you're like, oh, guess that, that was me, kids? Well, fortunately, they didn't know that, and then when we got home, we're like, we seen it. And of course, you know, your first reaction is, no, you didn't. And then all the teachers and stuff are like, yeah, we did, about 1.30. And I'm like, well, maybe you did. <laughs> so, kind of ironic. Can you talk just about the element of surprise? I mean, it's just much really off guard, right? Completely off guard, yeah. I'm in my car and the next thing I know, I have somebody sitting there stabbing me essentially and I don't I know these guys are gonna yell at me if I go too much. <laughs> Um, we haven't but had any issues. Obviously, there's some homeless people in the area, but we have never had any issues. We haven't had any run-ins. There's been no violence whatsoever. Um, as far as that individual, the first time I'd ever seen her, she's never, to the best of my knowledge, ever been around here or had any incidents here. You know, you didn't have to come to work today. Why, why did you show back up? Um, I guess a good work ethic. I had several meetings that were planned for today. I made sure I was there and 
As long as I'm able to come to work, I come to work. Chief, I have a question. You may not want to answer this, but I know that traditionally, at least my, I've been told that firefighters, when they appear on TV, get hassled. Teased, that is correct. And have to do some payback. Have you, how have you been treated? So fortunately, it's not uncommon for me to be on TV, so not quite all the same rules apply, but I did go down and give the cruise of Station One some money to buy dessert. Talk about, talk about your arm itself. I noticed that you're, you're holding it up a little bit. You talked a little bit earlier about the tendon damage. What do they have to do? How does it feel right now? So right now it feels reasonably okay. What they had to do is go in and uh, put some sutures in the tendons themselves. I'm not sure the exact numbers of that, and then they had to close up both of the fingers, and they closed up a wound in my leg. They uh, put like a half cast or partial splint on there that'll remain on there until I see the hand surgeon, um, which I'm scheduled to do tomorrow. Will you be okay? Prognosis? Everybody, everything as of now looks like I will be. I have good sensation in both of those fingers, and I am, have the ability to move them, so probability looks good. I mean, no certainty, but. Some cars, the minute you put it into gear, the doors automatically lock. Sometimes they don't lock until you reach a certain speed, that type of thing. I don't even know if you if you even thought about locking doors beforehand. What happens now? So hadn't really ever thought about it in the past because my vehicle, as you accelerate, does lock, but you have to reach up a speed somewhere around 15 miles per hour, and you can turn around and see the very short distance. I'm not sure I reached one mile per hour. Um, I don't know yet because w without all the details of everything, it's hard to say what it is. Um, other than the fact that I might be more likely to just lock the car manually on my own because I just never know. But still, you know, completely unexpected. And, the, you know, as of right now, I believe it's, you know, fairly randomness. So I'm not sure that there's any, you know, direct targeting or anything like that. So. Okay. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up at this I'm point. I'm glad that you're okay. Thank yeah, you guys so okay. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank thanks. 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Are you guys Yeah, I want to talk to you guys. Okay. Go ahead. Do it, Good afternoon. And thanks, Melissa, too. Appreciate that. Do you want to ask questions? Yeah, go ahead. What can you tell us about this? I mean, I, I think obviously the main thing people want to know is, was there a connection between the two? Had you seen him or what prompted this? Right. So we have a, a few more answers today. Um, the, the investigation actually continued into today and, and uh, is still open. Um, what we've learned through that investigation is that at this time it doesn't appear that there's any um, prior connection between the suspect and the victim. Um, that the victim wasn't targeted, um, was not apparently targeted for um, reasons of him being a, a fire chief um, or a public safety official. Um, and it looks really to be a, a random incident at this point. Does it appear, the Attorney Member Wong, so it appears that what happened is so the chief has his card, closed away, it hasn't locked yet, and this person allegedly just opens the door, jumps in, and tries to stab him and just... Right, yeah, that's. It appears that as he was stopped at the traffic light, the female suspect entered the passenger side um, um, front seat of the vehicle and began stabbing the victim. Did he try to, I mean, he got stabbed in his hand. It, it seems like he was trying to stop that. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I would be speculating um, to, to, um, to address that question. So I, How do we and, know it wasn't targeting law enforcement or a, a fire official? How have we ruled that out? So, I mean, just based on um, statements that um, investigators have received through the course of the investigation, I can't elaborate on what those statements are, give you any more detail, because uh, this case still needs to be adjudicated, and we don't want to jeopardize the integrity of that. Any idea where she came from? I don't know. I don't know that. Did she say anything about her to the That's a level of detail I personally don't know, and, and it being a, um, you know, that would 
be evidence in the case. And again, I don't want to jeopardize the adjudication of this case um, by releasing those kind of details. And, and a couple of other incidents of vandalism here, broken windows and stuff. Any connection or? We don't believe at this time that there's a connection between those. I believe there were criminal mischief cases um, and this particular incident here. And you don't think that those two, the other vandalisms, are connected as well? Uh, that, that I don't know. And she drugs and alcohol? That I don't know. And this was just an individual working on her own or just by herself, correct? She's not connected with any other. Yeah, I, I don't believe there are any other um, suspects or persons of interest in this particular incident. So let me there's let me let me restate one thing because um, I know that this is an this is an important part. Um, you know, uh, you know, motive has been a big question among folks, and um, you know, at this time it, it does not appear that. Uh, Chief Tate was targeted because he is a fire chief or a public safety official.